In this video we will analyze in detail the creation of the classic snake game from scratch and make this game using the Python language and the Pygame library. To understand, you need to have a basic knowledge of the Python language and object-oriented programming. Let's start our new project and first install the Pygame library. To do this, in the terminal enter the command, pip install Pygame. After installation, we will create a preliminary class structure for our game. To begin with, let's create the main class game, it will contain a number of methods such as the method for creating a new game, the method for updating the state, the method for drawing objects, checking for events, and the main method for launching the game run. Finally, we create an instance of this class and call this launch method. And for the convenience of further work, let's create a second file, game objects. We put two classes in this file, a snake class with state update and draw methods, and a second food class with one draw method. It is important to note that on input the constructors of these classes will take an instance of the main application class. Now we import these classes in the system module, so we can say the structure of the future game is ready. Now let's move on to the constructor of the game class. Here we set the size of the working window, it will be square, create a rendering surface and an instance of the clock class to set the number of frames per second. Next, in the update method, we update the rendering surface and set 60 frames per second. In the drawing method, paint the work surface black. But in the event check method, we check for closing the application. Now it remains to create the main loop where we will call all these methods at each iteration. Let's run the application and make sure that the application window of the specified resolution is created and everything works correctly. Great, but before I go any further, I would like to draw a grid on the working window. Let's enter the value of the tile and write a separate method where, using the line drawing function, we will create vertical and horizontal lines, taking into account the size of the window and the size of the tile. Let's put our grid in a draw method and look at the result. So everything is fine, we see the grid in which the whole game will pass. Now we need to remember to create instances of the snake and food classes in the new game method, then call the update and draw methods in the methods of the same name, and call the new game method in the game class constructor. And then we're all set for the next step. In the game objects file, we import a random number generator and, for convenience we assign an abbreviated name for two-dimensional vectors. In the constructor of the snake class, we assign the application instance and the size of the tile as attributes, initially the snake itself will be a square of the same size, for this we will use the convenient rect class. Well, let's try to display the snake using the drawing method. If you run the program, you can see a snake in the form of a green square which is located in the upper left corner of the grid. To make the snake appear in a new place every time, we will write a separate method to get random coordinates of the center of the square on our grid. Then, in the class constructor, set the center of the snake using this method and look at the result. As expected, with each new start, the position of the snake always changes, which means everything is working correctly. And now let's set the direction of movement of the snake, for example, to the right. In a separate move method, we will use a function to move the snake called moveIp, and we will call this move method through the update method. And if we start the game, we see that the snake is moving too fast, because for 60 frames per second the snake simply flies 60 cells to the right. To correct this shortcoming, we introduce a delay variable for the snake step in milliseconds and a time reference variable. Then we will write a method for calculating the time delta, in this method we will return the true value when the time is above the set interval. Then we use the delta time calculation to perform the next step of the snake in the move method. And as we can see, such a solution with the help of delta time helped to set the desired speed of the snake. Now it's time to write the control for the snake. To do this, we will write a separate control method that receives an event about the pressed key as input. We will run this method itself in the main application class in the event check method. The control will take place on the four keys WASD, and accordingly, on the pressed key, we will choose the direction for the movement of the snake. In general in this way, we get the direction of movement for each WASD key. And if you run the program now, you can control the snake without any problems. As for the food class, it's easy to do using our snake class. We will get the random position of the food using the already written method in the snake class. And we will draw food in red. Let's look at the result. 
and it is already possible to observe two objects on the playing field, but so far they do not interact with each other. In order for there to be an interaction between food and a snake, let's write a check method in which we compare the position of the snake with the position of the food, and if the positions are equal, then change the position of the food to random. If you check the operation of the program, you can make sure that if the snake eats food, then the position of the food immediately changes. And now I propose to write a borders check method for snake. In this method, we will check all four sides to see if they are crossed by a snake. If the snake crosses the border, then we will call the method to start a new game and restart. Proceeding similarly, call the borders check method from the update method. Let's run the application and make sure that everything works correctly, that is the game restarts when the window borders are crossed. So the most interesting remains. To ensure the growth of the snake in length, we will introduce two attributes, the length of the snake and the list of segments. When the snake eats food, we will increase the length variable by one unit, while in the move method at each step we will write its next position to the list of segments, and then slice the list along the length of the snake. And to display the snake, then in the drawing method we will display each segment separately. Let's see how the snake grows. I used my own author's approach to implement such a snake growth algorithm. In general, everything is fine, but there is a drawback, the snake passes through itself and this should not be. To check self-eating, we write a method in which we will check at each step the length of the segments with the length of the set composed by the coordinates of the segments. If the snake ran over itself, then the length of the set will be different, since the set contains only unique elements and duplicated coordinates to reduce its length. Let's play our game again to test this method, we need to reach enough length, so let's play a little. Well, as expected, everything works properly, the game restarts when the snake hits itself. But still there is one more drawback in the game, when you press the button of the opposite movement, the snake changes its direction, but this should not be. So, to fix the last drawback, you need to define a dictionary in which for each key the permission for movement is indicated. Initially allowed to move in all directions. In the control method, we check for permission to move and if it is possible to move in this direction, then we rewrite the dictionary where we already indicate the prohibition of movement in the opposite direction. Do the same for all other keys. And finally we can say our snake game is ready. In the end, you can enjoy the classic snake game. And since it uses an object-oriented approach, this game is easily scalable and allows for further improvement. So subscribe to the channel and write comments, see you soon.